Hello and welcome to Roundtable, a series of conversations with CEOs and business owners from Global Coffee Community. My name is Yanis Apostolopoulos and I'm the CEO for Specialty Coffee Association. First, we want to thank our series sponsor, Storm Barista Attitude, a blend of craftsmanship and high technology. Storm Barista Attitude is designed for the most demanding and experimental baristas, offering total control over brewing parameters. Learn more at www.stormbaristaattitude.com. The coronavirus pandemic has brought the global economy at a halt, having an immediate and long-term impact on specialty coffee businesses and professionals. What are businesses doing to survive in this time of crisis? What are the experience of those business owners who had to shut down or reduce their operations? Are there opportunities to be seen in these dark times? These are all questions we seek to answer in honest conversations with dozens of leaders in the industry over the next few weeks. In today's episode, I speak to representatives of espresso machine manufacturers. I hope you enjoy this conversation. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another roundtable series, um, I would say, a webinar uh, in this particular moment of time, uh, where it's an honor and a pleasure to have uh, industry leaders and CEOs from the espresso machine manufacturers. It's a, it's a very um, important roundtable for me because this is where it all sparked. Uh, we had the pleasure with uh, this group of people to meet uh, twice, once in CJEP and, and once uh, in, uh, I, hope, I think was host in Milan last year, where we start discussing about the future of uh, competitions and how we can support, I would say, the barista community and how the industry of uh, the machine manufacturers uh, for the espresso industry can evolve and how SEA can, can help on this one. And that sparked the whole idea around the Roundtable series. So it's my pleasure to welcome uh, Federico Gaia, uh, the CEO of uh, Rioma Group, uh, Astoria and Vega uh, brands. Hello, Federico. Hello, good morning. Uh, Valentina Dallacorte from Dallacorte. Hello, Valentina. Hello, everybody. Fabio Seccarani from uh, Simonelli Group. Hello, Fabio. Hello, Yanis. Thanks to be here. Ruggero Ferrari, uh, the CEO of Rancilio Group. Hello, Ruggero. Hello. Cosimo Lebardo, the CEO of uh, uh, Carimali Group. Sorry, Cosimo. Hi, Yanis. And finally, Enrico Francesco, the, C uh, the Chief Commercial Officer of Timbali Group. Um, hello, everyone. Hello, Enrico. So, uh, you're all in Italy. Um, Italy is start to opening up. It has been really uh, tragic and devastating for all of us, seeing what Italy has been through uh, over the past uh, two months, I would say. And uh, Italy is important for the coffee culture that it is there. And, and the espresso, I would say, uh, culture. So I would like to, to start with uh, Valentina uh, being in Milan, asking how things are, are looking there at the moment and what has been the challenges that you have faced until today? Hello, thank you. Well, the situation puts, puts a strain on many aspects of our life and our work, uh, I think, for everybody. Um, for me, the uncertainty has been the great enemy in this moment. Uncertainty about uh, legislation, regulation, uh, due to the fact that even the Italian government has been an unforeseen this one. Uh, so suddenly we were obligated to close our company and reorganize them in a completely different way. And it was a shock. I remember the day when we closed the company, it was <laughs> really uh, sad and shock. Uh, so in a record time, we organized work shift, uh, smart working office, uh, health and sanitation product, everything new, completely new. So looking for a new way to reopen the business. I perfectly remember Saturdays and Sunday waiting for the new decree 
for the famous ATECO code that is the identification for the activities uh, uh, to be in list for the, co the, the, the company who can uh, reopen. Uh, it's also important the oppression about uh, the oppression about this virus, the fear of infection, both in the family and in the company. So um, psychologically, <laughs> uh, the impact of many of managing this situation and making decision uh, under this pressure was not uh, easy, really. Uh, I can imagine that for everybody was <laughs> was like that. Um, in our company, we were lucky because the people was very collaborative because finally uh, they need to adapt in the rhythm of life for uh, the new form of work because uh, with the um, work shift, uh, people start at six in the morning and sometimes end the job at uh, nine in the night. So. Uh, also, mixing uh, family life with work uh, is like uh, also challenges. Then, yeah. In time, yeah, it was difficult. So, in the meantime, a part of this kind of concern it was the concern of the many coffee shop in Italy were closed. So, in Italy and all over the world, because finally I have. Uh, so it contact also with Spain and Spain is the same situation. So we always be in contact with our distributor and collaborator for monitor the development of the situation. And the situation is not so easy. The Italy, Italy for example, accounts about 10% of turnover for us. And the, there are estimated that one in four coffee shop will not able to reopen. So it's tragedy. So due to the new safety regulation and restriction, uh, problems are many. Reorganization of spaces in the coffee shop because uh, they need to uh, follow the new restriction. Um, expenses to be faced to do this reorganization. People and the staff to manage. So this, this has also happened uh, as I said, in other countries in the world. So this is uh, a situation, this situation is worrying. Yeah. I, I, the interesting thing about this round table is that you are all based in Italy, but your business is global business. Like you operate in, in almost every geography around the world. Mm -hmm. And I would like to, 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 to stand, to stay a bit more on understanding how and for, and for everybody to understand how this has impacted Italy specifically. Um, Cosimo, you are in Bergamo. We were seeing Bergamo in, in the news, one of the, the areas that have been hit the hardest in Italy. And I want to understand a bit that before going into to understanding how this has affected the business. Yeah, I mean, Bergamo it wasn't one of the areas affected the most. It was the area affected the most. Like this has been a battlefield. Um, going around the, since they reopened Italy on Monday and we could go around and move a bit, uh, the atmosphere here is very weird. People are uh, truly scared. I mean, I think um, being in Bergamo is almost like being in a different place versus the rest of Italy because here I would say that a good chunk of the population had to deal with it, lost a friend, lost a family member. And, and got heavily affected at the personal level other than the business level. So this has been pretty hard for, for all of us to go through this. Good news, we're here. Uh, but yeah, it's been, uh, the atmosphere here in Bergamo is, is very different versus what it was yeah. before. I, I can only imagine how in Italy and me coming from Greece, like we are a bit of more extroverts and we, we definitely like to socialize and serve food and drinks how things are going to change on, on, on the industry itself. Uh, so Federico, um, you are running a business there as well. How do you see that affecting the, what are the challenges there for the hospitality industry in general? Uh, I guess uh, the question is, 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 is very complicated because uh, um, the things we we most we most need now is a is a crystal ball, uh, which we don't have, of course. So, 
as Valentina told us before, it's a daily challenging, try to understand where we are gonna, where we are gonna go, or what is gonna happen next. And, um, and I guess that uh, we, have, uh, we are in front of a crisis which never happened before. I was not there in 1929. I was in Chicago in 2008, and I had to pack my staff and stuff and to go back to Italy because of the financial crisis. So it was clear that it was a demand crisis. So there was no money anymore. Nothing was, uh, let's say, liquid. Uh, the liquidity was uh, a, a, the issue into the, into the market. Uh, now it's a bit different. Uh, and I think that uh, it's the first time that we have uh, a combination of offering prices because we are not allowed to offer anything, even, even a coffee. And, and afterwards, a demand crisis because the people is without job or losing the job or uh, with a special, uh, let's say, government support with a very, very, very small salary compared to the normal one. So it's completely a new scenario. But we see a little bit of light. I mean, people have some money. And for example, they are trying to recreate their hospitality at home. So what has happened to me, for example, which I'm supporting a bit, as you may know, um, uh, online business, uh, which is done by Hotel Espresso Milano, we have a different problem. So we, we, we don't know where to put the orders, basically, because people at home, with a little bit of money they have, they want to buy the single group machine to replicate the experience that they cannot have anymore at the bar, because the restaurants and the bar are closed. So then the problem is, I mean, and I want to sum up in three points uh, about three main challenges we had, uh, I guess, my feeling, in my view. Uh, the first one is the speed. I mean, I, I closed February with a very good result, plus 20% on last year. And then in eight days, March, Italy was starting the shutdown, the lockdown. And everything changed dramatically from day after another day, after another day, and then, I mean, it was like a surreal. So we were not prepared. We are never, never prepared to, to face a crisis. But in this specific case, I mean, the situation was crazy. And I see Valentina, I had the same problem to put the people smart working, all the people, not just the, uh, the, 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 the accounting or the marketing or whatever, all the people smart working, and then the next challenge when, when you accomplish the smart working of the people was uh, to change the, the, the shift. So try to, uh, to, to apply this social distancing, finding this, uh, I mean, in a shortage of supplying. So that was very, very, very fast. The second is the fear. And this, this is what, what Cosimo told us, no? To deal with fear. I am a manager. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychologist. So I, of course, I talk with the people, I manage people, but managing fear of other human beings uh, that they are scared to touch the colleagues, uh, that's, that's wild. I mean, and for me that I, one of the, 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 the best handshaker in Italy, as, as probably Cosimo knows, uh, I mean, this was a, a real challenge for myself. You are not allowed to touch anybody and to stay in the same room with anybody, not to do meetings and not to talk. I mean, for, for, for me, it was completely crazy and it was very difficult to, um, to, to, to let's say, to, to calm down the panic of the people. The people was panicked. We had some, some cases, one cases in a company, and believe me, one of the biggest challenges I, I had in the last 10 years is uh, to manage the people which were completely crazy about this. Whether they are wrong or right, this is, I mean, another story, but they were panicked. And the third is the operation. I mean, it's not just the crisis related to Astoria, to Vega, to Carimali, to Noah Simonelli. So it's not a liquidity issue. It's not the crisis of the people which are not enough strong to survive, you know, a period of time where cash is not there, where sales are not there. No, it's the crisis of the whole supply chain. So even if you open the company, then you have to, to supply yourself, not to purchase. And the, 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 the supplier are closed. So it's the old value chain, and you don't know if they will reopen or not. I mean, you don't know if the, 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 the restaurant will reopen, and you don't know if the stainless steel supplier will, re, will, will reopen, because it's, it's really, really, really affecting 
everybody and all the team. <coughs> and the most important thing is that um, you have you have no turnover. I mean, you have you have a lack of turnover. And without turnover, I mean, you can be IBM, you can be Coca Cola, you cannot survive. I mean, there's, there's no business without turnover. You can be strong as you want financial wise. You can have on your back a lot of money, but if you don't invoice, if you don't have turnover, then you would be yeah. sooner or later. So, um, Enrico, touching on what Federico just said. How do you see the markets reacting um, in terms of um, of demand for for espresso machines? Well, uh, I would say that uh, there are many lessons to be uh, learned. Uh, uh, like uh, for every crisis, uh, there is a, a great deal of uh, bad things coming through that you have to cope with. But also, um, you're put under strain and uh, uh, stress and pressure, and you have to reinvent yourself and to challenge yourself the way you do things. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. It's actually uh, something that we should be doing on a regular basis. And I think that what comes uh, uh, evident from uh, amongst all the other obvious uh, um, things that we can, uh, we can mention but what comes uh, evident uh, from uh, this uh, um, happening or occurrence uh, is the importance of uh, education strategy in the business. Because uh, um, being able to uh, cater for uh, different segments and, challenge, uh, and channels, uh, it's essential. Because uh, if you think about the fact that uh, even in countries uh, that um, under, uh, uh, underwent a lockdown, some segments uh, didn't stop at all because they were considered of uh, public utility or public services. I'm talking about, uh, to name uh, just one, uh, the petrol stations. But on, not only that, I could think of uh, the, um, hospitality, uh, the hospital business, the medical uh, business. Uh, that obviously very much linked to the uh, fully automatic machines. But, you know, having a, a di diversified uh, um, commercial strategy uh, helps uh, mitigating the risk, which is a, a huge risk because uh, all of a sudden, you know, I think that uh, the industry started the year very well. We, uh, we heard that before, and I think that that is something that uh, happened all across the board. And uh, you do realize that within the space of uh, seven days, uh, every, everything can collapse. And it's actually scary. So uh, one of the uh, um, key elements uh, that I am willing to uh, bring forward uh, with so much energy within the business is the importance uh, not to rest on our laurels uh, when orders come through nicely from the usual suspects. But you do need to uh, challenge yourself uh, and try to reinvent the way uh, you uh, ensure that you've got many diversified stream of revenues. And that is not only because of the profit, uh, but because uh, that way there is an ethical element. You're able to maintain operations uh, running to a minimum. And then you help, uh, you do your bit within society uh, and uh, corporate social responsibility, maintaining uh, uh, operations active uh, for families uh, and so forth. So there's not only an implication of, uh, of uh, profit, but there's also a social element uh, as well. So uh, we can make an impact on that. And I'm uh, definitely, this is a big lesson learned uh, uh, for me. There's another lesson learned uh, because, uh, and that comes from, uh, um, the challenges that you mentioned before, because uh, obviously, apart of, from the uh, uh, obvious challenges, like uh, the operational challenges, the cash uh, issues, uh, um, which happened for uh, everyone, and for Italy particularly, I think, uh, more than other countries, because uh, we were one of the very first countries in which uh, the lockdown uh, was implemented. And I do remember vividly some customers uh, on an international scale, not, 
I was saying that apart from the, over, uh, the, the obvious operational uh, and uh, uh, financial issues, uh, there was uh, one concern uh, that um, then uh, it's another uh, lesson learned for me. And uh, it's, uh, it was that prior to the lockdown, uh, we were very active uh, with many projects uh, on, uh, on uh, an international basis. And uh, one concern was uh, how to prevent uh, activities from uh, stopping completely. Uh, and uh, I was very impressed by uh, the strong willingness and the professionalism, uh, the corporate spirit and the passion of our people, which were, were scared, definitely, but also were determined to uh, carry on uh, being busy. And uh, um, this willingness to uh, remain active uh, and uh, remain busy, uh, it's a strong point uh, that for me personally, it's something that I'm sure that we will uh, uh, build upon. Thank you, Fabio. Yes. Going on on uh, on the on the more positive side, do we see in in other areas of the world that are opening up, like Asia, that has been through that first wave, or in some countries like Singapore are also going the second wave now? Do we see any positive signs of recovery there? There is a lot of discussion that this going to be if, if this going to be a V-shaped recovery or, or an, uh, an L-shaped recovery for the global economy. Do we see that happening in, in countries that they're, they're going through the first shock and coming back to, to the new, I would say, reality? Well, um, I would say uh, yes, yes. We, we see uh, signals uh, on that directions, but it's too early, uh, in my opinion, to say that um, uh, they will uh, manage the, the recovery of all of the world. I mean, still there are problems in many countries and uh, still uh, there is an up and down. You know, sometimes it happens that some countries have uh, a new issue in terms of, uh, of a virus. So think about uh, Singapore. It seems that they were, it was the, the most safety place, then they suddenly shut down everything and they are postponing the reopening until uh, July. But it's true that uh, China, who was the first, which was the first country involved, is now uh, recovering. Although even there, there are different regions reacting in um, in a different way. Uh, I see um, a good signals uh, or signals also from uh, from Korea. While as I see still on hold uh, Japan, Japan uh, is not uh, recovering um, at all for, for the time being. Uh, I think that out of the fact that they, they are uh, the countries that are going out the, the crisis before than Europe or, uh, or um, USA, is also the structure of the business uh, over there. Um, it's mainly dominated by big chains. And uh, in my opinion, the big chains are uh, more resilient to, to react. They have less problem um, of cash flow and they can, uh, are more capable to, um, to set new plans for, for overcoming uh, the crisis. And uh, I think that that could be uh, an advantage for advantages for countries that are mainly dominated by um, big players. So, Ruggiero, we, we heard um, Warren Buffett saying this weekend that they sold uh, within April all the stakes they had on airlines. They had uh, stakes in Delta and all the US airlines, Delta, United, American, and Southwest, and they sold everything in April. And they are sitting now on 134 billion of cash, the, the biggest cash they had ever. And he was saying, I'm very glad that I'm out of the airline industry and I don't own any hotels, which is a clear sign that the, from the investor perspective, and you all have investors, um, they see that as a very risky market and that uh, the, the, the financial foundations are, are kind of, I would say, in turmoil, given that the countries are trying to put money in the market to get the economy going. 
to get the consumption up, to get a, the demand so that you, they can get the production going. And we see that taking uh, this time, taking um, a, a huge toll, I would say financially. So what do you think um, it's going to be the, the challenges for, for the espresso machine manufacturers in the immediate future when it comes to production and, and demand uh, from, from, I would say, the hospitality industry, but also the, the small medium coffee shops, which are the main source of business for, for the industry? I, it's a good question. Uh, I think, uh, so we are trying to understand uh, what are the many implications uh, of this. First of all, as you said, and somebody said before, there is a, an impact that will hit uh, the industry as a whole uh, because many shops, especially the small ones, uh, are going uh, to close down. Uh, the ones remaining, uh, we don't know for how long we'll have uh, um, a turnover crisis because, uh, for example, they are talking about uh, a return of the COVID in the second part of the year and uh, in the outlook, uh, probably it will uh, continue until mid uh, of 2021. So this brings uh, the present procedures uh, that are in emergency procedures like entering uh, or non entering uh, uh, the bar, the restaurant uh, in uh, too many people will, uh, will necessarily uh, create a, a downturn uh, of uh, uh, the earning capacity, the turnover and the earning capacity of uh, even the companies that will survive. Uh, for us, uh, it means uh, we don't know what the reaction will be, how important will be uh, the, the coffee segment for them. Uh, for sure, uh, one, uh, one uh, aspect that we may uh, um, see is that they will invest or they, they select the investment on the equipment and it could be uh, that we will see a, a rise in the rental business uh, or even in the paper use business no? through for example today there are methods by which through telemetry you can uh, charge according to the consumption so we are trying to understand uh, what can be the behavior uh, of uh, our customer for a, a long period of time, more than uh, one year for sure, and uh, try to uh, reorganize the company uh, or to give a, a response from the company point of view, either in terms of uh, uh, sales uh, response, but also after sales response. Uh, for example, uh, we expect, uh, uh, due to the restriction to travel, uh, and, uh, and also to, due to the uh, need of customers to reduce the maintenance cost, uh, to ask uh, the manufacturers to improve uh, the phone fix uh, or the first time fix, for example, like the chains uh, are uh, used to do today. Uh, it's still, it's still under, uh, under examination. Uh, we are uh, trying uh, to, uh, we don't have the crystal ball, as Federico said before, there are many, many aspects uh, of this kind, most probably this part, the rental, the, the paper use, the remote assistance will increase. And consequently, we have also to reorganize behind our organization, also in terms of culture, besides the means to go in this direction. Because what we have seen these days, that passing from the typical Italian way of working, that is relational with our relation in a meeting, very inefficient and barely ineffective, to work through uh, uh, webinars, teams, uh, or Skype, uh, uh, the rule of communication has changed. The people has to get uh, more prepared. So also one of the difficulties we have seen, uh, and the, 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 our staff has responded well, uh, have responded, has responded well anyway, but there is also behind a change in, uh, in the organization to go in this direction. So this is the... Yeah. 
that is a very interesting point because we are kind of um, privileged here. We have the, the ability to work from home and we know on the coffee supply chain, um, the two sides of the supply chain, going back to pickers, farmers, um, baristas, uh, and, and small medium businesses, and also your, your um, employees on the, on the factories, they are the weakest part of the chain there because they have to, to, to go to, to work. And some of them, they have lost their jobs completely, especially you are the traditional espresso machine manufacturer that your main business and we've seen baristas going out of work globally because of that shutdown. So I would like to ask uh, Cosimo, do you feel that we're going to see innovation happening out of that? We've seen a lot of people losing their job. Do we feel that this is going to push the, the, the boundaries of where traditional espresso machines as we know it today and what services today is going to change? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, baristas are talking about the necessity to diversificate what they what they do. I mean, having lived in Australia, every coffee shop in Australia, for instance, has a window for takeaway. Right now, if you go in most European bars, they only have the counter as a place of service. So obviously, all the service model and the accessibility to that experience is uh, monodimensional in many coffee shops. Uh, I think in the future that is going to change. I mean, I, I believe you'll see coffee shop owners thinking, how can I diversificate my business model in order to, to what uh, was uh, Enrico was saying before, to have a minimum business that will keep my business alive? Because that's going to become the new game, I think. A lot of owners will start thinking about that. And so that will in increase the, the need, for instance, for portability of the experience, for accessibility of the experience. So the whole game will be how we make this flavor-based experience, coffee flavor-based experience portable and available in, in, at more times of the day and in more places. So mobility, will, which was something that we were seeing before, will become more of a factor and having different experience paths associated with the business will be a, a new factor. So definitely I expect a lot of innovation um, and I, I guess we're all thinking about it in, at, at this round table uh, secretly and on our own on how we can accommodate that need. Uh, definitely contactless will be another thing where you, you can use the machine without having to touch it. For instance, that's possible with fully automatic machines. We already have, have a system for that. Um, so, I mean, there are lots of things that will change because we have to learn to live with this. This is not gonna go away uh, immediately, uh, but I also think we'll also shape businesses in a way to, for them to become more sustainable in case something like this happens again. That's interesting. Federico, do you think that uh, super automatic machines will see, um, an increase on their market, sir, coming out of this crisis? That's, it's easy to answer yes, but uh, it's a kind of, uh, uh, you know, automatic reaction. And uh, it's a reaction which, uh, as an answer, I give you um, without, uh, without ma making further thinking. I mean, for sure, part of my answer is real. Uh, automatic machine will, will support uh, a dematerialization of the business, but uh, should, we, should we ready to dematerialize, dematerialize an ag or to enter into a bar and having a coffee shop? Should we, are, we, are we ready not to shake our hands anymore? This is what I'm fighting. I mean, I'm fighting to have my business model back and to have the reality back. Because I think that we are living a little bit in a bubble, which is blowing, blowing, blowing. And this is, the bubble is for how long we are prepared to, let's say, completely change many, many business models and how long uh, uh, there will be the sustain sustainability, economic sustainability of these, these decisions. So yes, for sure, fully automatic will be uh, an answer, but I guess, as what I think, uh, being Italian, being in Italy, doing traditional coffee machine, what I believe 
want to die, it's the made in Italy. So we have to be back to walk the talk of made in Italy and to have, we, we have to be consistent uh, to the, the, the proposal. So why a cafeteria is buying a traditional coffee machine? Because when you, when you have your traditional coffee machine on the desk, then the bar is 90% down, let's say. Maybe not 90, but I mean, the biggest part of the, of the, of the feelings uh, uh, is there. So I think that this is what we are, what we need, what we have to push uh, into the industry, down to the, uh, to the retailers, to the distribution network, to the dealers, and you know, for sure, innovate, but at the same time, to remember that there is a magic which happens when you sell something, and when you sell something, it's, you know, to, to remember, that before selling a product, we sell our, our ourselves. I mean, we sell a concept, we sell a mood, we sell a brand, and the brand is the most powerful brand that you can find worldwide. It's the made in Italy. And we are made in Italy. We are doing coffee machine. I mean, the coffee machine is made by a nice design. And I think that everybody needs to be a little bit back to what they, uh, what they did and what they, 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 what they experienced in the past. So I, I, I think we have to carefully balance these two aspects and being ready for my, my view, for, for myself, being ready to uh, step into a business which I, I'm not, for example, with a consistent fully automatic offering, which will, will increase for sure, but also before was increasing a lot. Uh, on the other way around, uh, trying to push our concept on the market because made in Italy and traditional coffee machine is something like shake hands and hugs that never die. Yeah. I think that you're right on this one. Coffee is an experience and yes, super automatic machines might seem a solution for the immediate, uh, I would say, challenge. But um, we have seen that at the moment um, what what is important is what is outside that cup of coffee. And that cup of coffee was built out of an experience and the values that we were representing as specialty coffee industry outside that cup of coffee. And it's, uh, it's the values of uh, equity and it's the values of uh, sustainability and making the whole supply chain more um, thrivable. And those were values that, um, that were uh, we bet as an industry in the past and, and we created a system that the barista it's the main communicator of those values towards uh, the consumer and I think that that is a key there so changing a bit the subject because we, we, we are all understanding the challenges I would like to go to the more um, humane part of, of our business like we're managing uh, anxiety, fears from people. And you have been uh, leading companies through these uh, tough times. So I would like to, to start on this one with uh, um, Ruggiero and say, and ask you like, how does this feel being um, a CEO of a company in those difficult times? And what is the personal toll out of that? It's stressy, I think, uh, because uh, you need uh, somehow to manage uh, uh, in an equilibrated way something that is also new for you. We, I don't have any experience uh, uh, on uh, what's going on. Uh, you, you need to really to keep calm, try to listen to people uh, more from uh, a human perspective. For example, we as Rancilio decided to, uh, uh, on panic uh, of our workforce, uh, we decided to close the company on a voluntary basis uh, one week before the official uh, shutdown uh, from the state. And this, uh, from uh, our work, as wo uh, was uh, perceived uh, as, uh, um, let's say, uh, an act uh, of uh, uh, sensitivity uh, behind the business uh, to the extent that for reopening uh, we didn't have uh, any any problem and all the people came back uh, uh, with uh, I don't say enthusiasm but uh, uh, 
uh, sure that the company is uh, at their side. Um, I think uh, all the, com the, the companies of this business uh, uh, have, uh, uh, they are lucky not to, fee to live uh, in uh, um, um, an environment of uh, strong uh, 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 syndical uh, trade union uh, uh, relations, so it's, uh, it's more familiar based, uh, so it's, uh, it's easier to, to move like that, uh, uh, but it, it was new, uh, for me it was new because, uh, we, you know, we are part of a big group, uh, that is a financial group, uh, and I had uh, uh, to, to manage uh, <laughs> the company uh, like uh, I was an entrepreneur, trying to justify certain uh, uh, moves uh, toward uh, the, the shareholders. Uh, and uh, I think for everyone uh, it's been uh, stressy. And, uh, um, but so this, this is how we have moved. I, um, the, the human, the, human uh, the, 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 the people, the staff, uh, never like in this uh, 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 phase, uh, uh, are really the center uh, of a company. So we need to protect them uh, anyway. Yeah, Make, makes complete sense. Valentina, how has been the transition from you from being a, a, a more family business to, to an investor-based business? So how does this transition coincide with the, this, this crisis and how does it felt for you personally managing that whole situation? Well, I think that uh, um, we we are also part of a big group since the last uh, last year, and I think it was it's a positive thing for this moment because uh, sure uh, uh, it's a more um, safe uh, situation. Uh, apart of that, it was uh, yeah it was uh, difficult to manage as as. Um, as we said, that to manage the operation things, uh, then uh, in the same time, the uh, contingency plans that uh, the, the group asked uh, to, to us. Um, it was a question of creating the different scenarios, uh, possible action to be taken, consequence, and then reversing everything <laughs> and straight it lower again. Um, and all of this without taking uh, any substantial energy uh, for the development of a new outgoing proce project. So yes, quite, quite stressful. <laughs> I also personally I just like to say, because uh, it's also personally a uh, thing that the people, uh, it's like most of other, of other parents uh, to experience the difficult to mixing the family life and the smart working uh, and all these new things to, uh, to learn and to create. So yes, it's not, uh, it was not a joke. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can only imagine. <laughs> um, so family, business, employees, the burden is the burden is it's it's really there and and it's a very heavy i would say weight to carry um cosimo how it it felt during this crisis well um, um uh, fun enough, this crisis had, uh, from a family point of view, it was very good. I mean, I got to spend more time with my kids, either I wanted or not. We got to spend more time in the same place. So from, from a personal family point of view, it was actually good. I discovered things that I didn't know about them. Spending all the time at work, usually, and never being home, uh, it wasn't, uh, it was a positive surprise. And there was a surprise, there was a little bit of a play time in the evenings, a lot of phone calls during the day, back to back, like uh, basically one after the other, which is interesting in terms of the culture you have to build around uh, what they call smart working. I don't think there is much smart about it. It's more remote working, but, or you gotta be smart about it. That's what they call it, smart working. In any case, um, it was building a new routine around work, family, tension, 
you know, from other people understanding the psychology, because for, for me here, Carimali is also a very small company and is a family business. It's not, I mean, we have a group of company, but effectively it's a family. So I had the relationship with the other family as well. Uh, uh, and here with the leadership team of Carimali, uh, it's, been, uh, it's been an intense exchange of emotions, constant change as Valentina was describing. Um, and in that you have to find the balance at home typical like which room do we do, do you use like kids going to school during the day and you have to run a business so you have to switch rooms and with noises in the background but I guess we got all used to that over time so it's not making any any anyone notice it anymore it's kind of became the new normal well I'm happy that the kids discovered new thing. You discovered new things about the kids. I'm not sure if the kids were happy to discover new things about you. They were like, not that happy. You know that I can be, you know, intense and looking, and so this is happening, huh? I think all of us working from home. When when we're going back from work, yes, we are stressed, but we are relaxing at home. But working from home, I think it's it has been a challenge showing a different face to the family as well, like how it is actually how we behave where we are at work and, and we're trying to manage that balance. I would like to, to start going away from that and, and opening a, a window to what opportunities might look like. So um, I'd like to start with um, Federico. So do we see opportunities? Like wh where are the opportunities that we see as an industry coming out of that? Because I believe that every crisis brings opportunities. We have talked about that or hinted about that. But I think that every crisis pushes the comfort zone of, of ourselves, of our industries, to explore new boundaries and, and new territories that we haven't before, and that brings opportunities. Uh, <clears throat> look, that's, that's the, uh, the best part of the story. First of all, we were talking before about investing and disinvesting and shareholders and investors, that it's a, it's a, there, there are great opportunities coming coming. Uh, I, I guess that, uh, as, 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 as always, uh, we said cash, cash is king and, and who, who has cash, who is uh, in the position to invest, I guess uh, in a six months or, or, or so, there will be a lot, of, uh, um, a lot of chances and opportunities to, to evaluate at least. So that's the first, uh, uh, you know, uh, on, on, on the background of the industry, not, not only this industry, uh, I guess, in, in all all the background and the big picture we are we are playing uh, with, and 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 in regards to coming a little bit to the micro, um, in regards to to, to the company, I, I think that uh, the chance chance the gift we we, we got from from this virus is uh, is that uh, we have been all forced to make a, a full checkup of our company, you know, um, it's like to go to the doctor and to have a full checkup. And then what, what, what do you need to check? Uh, first one is the, I don't know who, who was talking about uh, resiliency. I mean, first one is the, maybe Fabio. I mean, the resiliency of your company means how much equity do you have? How much cash? Which is your um, sourcing policy? Is the single sourcing policy still clever? How many overdraft do you have? How much cash you can collect in a short times, which is the balance between your debts and equity. So that's a way in which you have to face very soon because you understand that you, you might have zero turnover eventually. And you need to pay the salaries and you need to keep the structure at the very minimum cost at the new minimum because no, nobody knows where the new minimum of the cost is. So, the minimum is a story. The new minimum is another story. So that things are very welcome, I guess, to push ourselves to a new um, stage. And then, and that's the first, I mean, resiliency. The second is related to, to the community. I guess I don't want to make a, a, a speech like, like, like the Pope, but, uh, but uh, I guess we are in a time being uh, where uh, we are losing a little bit the sense of the community. At least in Italy, we have no, uh, let's say, backyard of the of the condo anymore. We have no churches, community. 
uh, we have we have no politics anymore. People are not getting in, in, thanks to the politics together anymore. So I guess that the the company is is the the, the, the minimum the the, the, the atom uh, the minimum level of of a community. So you have to speak uh, and to keep in a consideration all your stakeholders. I mean, supplier, customers. You are you are. You are the, the center of, of a community and you have to keep everybody in. You have to talk with the people and to, you know, to, to evaluate uh, how, how important is this community for, for you and for the people surrounding you. Um, and and, and, and this, is, this is another point that uh, we, time to time we, we forget or we risk to, 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 to lose um, and, and we suddenly recollect it when there are some, such a crisis, no? Uh, employee, workers, listen, many, many different things at the television, uh, at the radio, uh, everywhere, on the news, on the web. And then they ask myself as a company, what should we do? Is the virus really on the surface? Can I get the virus if I stay two meters uh, away from these ladies or that guy? So it's, it's, this is because they trust you and they and you are part of you are the center of the community and you have to to keep everybody in the same in the same i mean everybody to everyone together and the, and the last and the third is that uh, you have to play with your own people and now i come into the company so before was a discussion about uh, a point related to the stakeholders but if you come to your company uh, this is a big challenge to all your employee and you really need to make the job of finding out new talent. So you cannot refer to the one that you, you were referring, you was referring three days ago, that was your Maradona, you know, in the team, because he is worried about the mother or he is concerned about the, the father or he has a problem or he's not working very well in smart working. So you have to, to switch uh, to another guy and to find you are forced in a way to find new talent and to bring new talent outside from the people and to use the talent uh, for in, in, in the best way for the company i i don't believe the people who say oh, i don't have the right people there is always good people in a company it's you as a ceo as a manager whatever that you need to bring the talent out and last, but not, but, 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 not, but not the least, uh, you have to educate your management. Because I found myself that, uh, uh, that, that, that sometimes managers, including myself, are a little bit dreamers. They hope too much. And this is the case not to dream, not to hope, but to be very consistent and to look at the daily reality. And not to say, well, mm, ah, don't worry. I mean, I have enough cash, and then in two months, yeah, we will be out. It's better, you know, to 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 set ourselves on the worst case scenarios, and then to find ourselves on the wrong side of the story. Yeah, I hear you. I do though believe that we need to be realists as much as we can and pragmatists during this crisis. But if, like we should be dreaming and we should be hoping because that's how things are going to move around. So, um, Enrico, going to you, like, where do you see opportunities coming for, the, for this industry? Um, hear me okay? Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Right. So, um, I think uh, that there are couple of elements uh, uh, that um, represent an opportunity. First of all, it was mentioned before, but definitely there is some uh, innovation coming through uh, because uh, we will all be uh, pushed to go a bit further with uh, um, this uh, change in uh, habits uh, that will happen for sure within the industry. So some product innovation will happen for sure. Uh, the other point is, uh, a concept that I call the asset management. Uh, and that, that's not necessarily true for the single independent coffee shop, but uh, it's something that it becomes very apparent uh, if you come uh, from outside the industry, this industry, you know, there is an opportunity to improve uh, with asset management. Uh, and by that, I mean, uh, you know, implementing uh, 
service operations uh, and uh, going for a business model which optimizes cash. Uh, and that, that can become uh, um, uh, an issue that makes the difference uh, in times like this. And the third element I think is the most important one. Um, you know, coffee has this uh, enormous power to shorten distances. And uh, not many industries can boast, uh, can enjoy this asset. And, uh, and therefore, you know, I see this kind of uh, hunger for uh, going back uh, to uh, um, having a social experience thanks to coffee. And, uh, and therefore, the implication of that is that there is going to be a kind of a fly to quality. Let me call it that way. Fly to quality within the industry because there is going to be um, uh, a coffee business uh, coming back because people simply demand for that. I'll give you an example. I live, uh, I come from a, a, a town near Venice, it's called Treviso. And uh, 10 days ago or seven days ago, when it, be, when it became apparent that you could go to a coffee shop for a takeaway, there were literally people queuing up to have a, a coffee. And then they were mingling outside the coffee shop, uh, even though it, was, uh, it wasn't legitimate. But they were mingling because uh, they wanted to be back to normal. So, you know, I see that as an enormous opportunity because not many industries have got this huge drive of the social experience. Uh, that's the reason why I do think that the uh, baristas and coffee shops uh, will go back on track uh, um, putting more emphasis on quality, the quality of the experience that they can deliver. And that is a big plus. I hear you. So you are referring, and Fabio, I want to come to you, as, like to phrase a bit the question. So Enrico was saying, we're going to see more of asset management, which eventually will push not only the boundaries um, of the industry, but will also start people rethinking about servicing machines and how service is going to, to look like. And that's one part. You have been working with um, retail chains as well and, and, and coffee chains around the world. Has any of your customers approached you and say, hey, let's go uh, and try to rethink or redesign the, the coffee experience within that framework? Like how do we, we, we reimagine that for the future? So, yeah, it's, first of all, I agree with you when you said before that, that uh, uh, for instance, specialty coffee is not only drinking an excellent coffee. You know, it's an experience, it's a, a, a set of values all together. And uh, uh, I think we are now in the middle of a, uh, of a crisis and uh, maybe sometimes the emotions can uh, bring us to, to take a um, uh, decision or uh, to make uh, thinking that um, uh, are really uh, dictated by uh, the contingency, you know? But in my opinion, it's very important uh, to keep the perspective, you know? So to try to look at this period with the eyes of the future, you know, just to cool down. Uh, this is the first point as we have to must have a, a perspective. The second point is that um, uh, I think uh, mm, mindfulness, we are full of information. Uh, it's an infodemia, full of uh, fake news. So we have to select the right ones in a, in a way and frame exactly the direction. And the direction is what you said, where to go in the future. No? So we have, in my opinion, we do not have to forget where we were two months ago. Two months ago, we were talking about uh, primitization of the coffee consumption greater quality mindfulness uh, plans of the new opening of coffee shops, quality coffee shops. I read somewhere that there was a plan for 2020 of um, more than 40,000 uh, coffee shops uh, to be open uh, all around the world. So we were there, no? Uh, on top of that, there was a, we do not have to forget, there was a, a digital transformation going on as in terms of technology. Then we have the crisis. You know? So I do not think that the crisis can cancel this, all of this. 
in terms of experience. So uh, the, uh, what I see in the future is uh, the same experience. And I, I expect that uh, um, our clients uh, will ask uh, the same experience. So they could, to collaborate, to build the same experience. But in my opinion, what could, could change is how and uh, where have this, uh, this experience. You know? So that's why um, I think that the, the chains are more equipped to, to overcome the crisis. I read in a, in a recent um, BCG snapshot, consumer uh, <clears throat> um, uh, snapshot, uh, that uh, the premium uh, segment are less affected than uh, the, the, the basic one. No? And why? Because they rely exactly on what you said before, on values, on different way of uh, uh, offering uh, uh, their, their values, not only on, on the food or the coffee, but adding some other values. So in a way, they will reshape the way of offering this package, but they have to offer this package and the people want this package. So I don't think it's only a matter of, uh, of um, uh, um, reshaping the way uh, uh, they take a coffee. You know? They have to re redesign the, interior, the entire experience inside the shop and according to that, uh, get the right direction with the, uh, with the suppliers. This is one fact. The second fact is that it's true that uh, uh, the, this crisis is bringing more and more home consumption. So even the coffee uh, the, from, from uh, let's say, from the on-premises to home and uh, consumption is, a, is a flowing over there. So in my, in what I think is that uh, uh, this um, uh, request uh, of quality will keep, but will shift on the house of the people. Uh, so uh, the challenge is uh, how can I bring the same quality of coffee in the house of people? It's not only a matter of uh, designing uh, uh, a good piece of uh, machinery, but we need to bring their knowledge uh, because it's the knowledge together with the technology that they can get the coffee. And we cannot expect that uh, all the, uh, the people can uh, get uh, a barista course to, to make a good coffee. So that's why I say that the digital technology and the digital transformation that had uh, a strong, a strong increase in this field because all of us uh, has been uh, forced to use more and more digital equipments. And uh, see, I think all, all of us are experienced with uh, one helder that uh, are able now to navigate and to share with the Zoom or whatever in a, in, in a video. You know? So I think that uh, um, the, the, the challenge and the opportunity, the opportunity is that uh, to bring uh, a simple way of, uh, of um, delivering this uh, quality experience uh, uh, in a simple way. I mean, bring the same quality in a simple way, uh, thanks to also the uh, digital uh, platform that can uh, help in delivering, uh, let's say, the knowledge of the coffee out of the physical part of the, of the experience. That is, that, is, that is really interesting. So, um, and I want to go to Cosimo because um, he and I work, were working back then. So I come from Greece and in Greece we had a similar crisis, not the, the, the healthcare aspect of that, but the, the financial aspect of that in 2015 when the banks were closed, the, the GDP collapsed by 10% and unemployment skyrocketed by 30%. What we've seen though and what I've experienced um, during that crisis was that coffee is, it is the, the affordable, I would say, luxury uh, that uh, people are reaching out. And, and that was a great opportunity. That was where the whole, I would say, specialty coffee movement grew in Greece during uh, years that were really rough years in terms of economic wise for Greece. Um, so, Based on what you just said, Fabio, Cosimo, where do you see like this in, as an expanding opportunity in, in a global level? Because this is not just a healthcare crisis, it's a financial crisis and it's gonna affect like people uh, big time. Well, <clears throat> it's a complex thing. I mean, seeing this, I mean, there are two theories. We're gonna go back to where we were and I'm going to take it with a wide, I'm going to come in to the, to answer your question, but I want to go broader first. 
I think, you know, there are two basic approaches. We're going to go back to where we were because this is like, an, uh, this is a pandemic. Uh, we had it in uh, 1918. We went back to where we were after two years. It took two years. We're going to get back to where we were. Then there is the other one that says this is a paradigm shift. This is going to be a paradigm shift that is going to change us forever. So we have two very different positions that I've sort of heard amongst this group as well in a, a bits and pieces. Now, I don't, I don't choose one, but I'm trying to consider numbers or things that have happened. Uh, I think this crisis is mainly a sign that we are too many on this planet at this moment. And, um, and you know, and that's something we're gonna have to learn to deal with more. And let's start from there. Because the financial crises that keep happening one after the other are not accidental. So there are bumps on the road that keep happening. I don't think this is the last one necessarily. We had five pandemics. We had Ebola, SARS, uh, MERS, uh, this one, and I'm missing, oh, and the, uh, the H1N1. So we had five viruses in the first 20 years of this century alone. We've been lucky four times. The fifth time we've not been so lucky. Who says to us that this is the last one? Because it's five. Every four years, four or five years, we got one. And we've gotten lucky. Obviously, with the increased connections and everything, the, the chances that this could affect, I mean, there was uh, uh, Bill, uh, Bill Gates was talking about this uh, scarily in a, in a previous TED talk from a few years ago. And I don't think this is going to be the last bump on the road. So we have to structure our businesses to face this. And this is going to be a challenge. So based on the things I've seen and on the thoughts I have in my head, this is going to be a paradigm shift. We're not going to go precisely to where we were. Human beings will always try to go back to where they were. So I can see there is going to be somewhere in the middle uh, a changed experience around coffee. So coffee's got the good thing, though, of all the industries on the planet, during war times, coffee and makeup consumption goes up. Those are the two things that increase consumption. We just have to innovate to meet that consumption as manufacturers, as coffee shops, as operators in the supply chain of coffee to get close to that. So innovation would be the key and diversification would be the key. But this is, this is what I see happening. I see that Coffee, yes, we'll, we'll hit the bump, we'll have a year uh, of, of readjustment, but then we'll start, the consumption will continue because actually the alertness that you need during crisis is higher. So coffee consumption normally goes up. And that, that's the good news. We just need to find a way to get there and cater to that. And innovation will be the key. I think you know we're all gonna become startups in a way. We gotta be ready to reinvent ourselves and think like a startup. And that's the key for, uh, for me to, to face the future. So you're mentioning startups. Ruggiero, you've got all my financial questions today. So I want to ask you this. So we've seen that a lot of money have been lost uh, in the markets globally, which means that um, we were living an era of consolidation. And I would say, uh, on every part of, of the industry, um, uh, we've seen consolidation on uh, supply of coffee, on uh, retail chains, on um, even machine manufacturers. Now that, that money is going out of the market, there is a speculation that uh, this consolidation might um, slow down, or there is the other theory that says that might spark even further consolidation because of the need of capital for businesses to survive. Do we see out of that any opportunity in either way in consolidating the industry or non-consolidating the industry? Because Cosmo was talking about startups. Um, good question. I don't have the answer, Yannis. Uh, um, it can be either way. Uh, it can be that uh, all the money that is around uh, and uh, reprinted again and again and again uh, to support uh, uh, the, the difficulties of the economy sooner or later apart uh, reabsorbing uh, will have to go hopefully in the direction of uh, startups not only 
consolidation. So um, I think uh, that uh, it, the consolidation uh, uh, can have also uh, limits. For example, I come from Gelato uh, and now I am in coffee. In this kind of industry, the consolidation uh, uh, not always is something that brings uh, added value to the business itself. So it's more important uh, the, um, the, 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 the industry and the basic of the business uh, below. So maybe um, startups uh, can be something that add uh, new energy uh, to the industry, new ideas uh, that, uh, so it can be either way. Yeah. And uh, Valentina coming to you to close these circles of questions. Um, do we see opportunities? I know that Dallacorte has invested in, I, I would say, also uh, single group machines and, and home consumption. Do we see that uh, uh, trend growing in the future? Like, is it something that it's here to stay? Or is it something that it's uh, here as, I would say, a countermeasure to the, to the lockdowns and people being very social, especially in our industry, will go out to celebrate and this is something that will kind of stop. Is there a real opportunity there? Well, it's not a good question. <laughs> uh, yes, we think could be possible. I totally agree with Cosimo when he said that we are living uh, with uh, two different uh, point of view. Somebody that wants to back to reality very soon and somebody who are very scared to go to uh, the park now with the children, to go to the bar, to come back to the restaurant. So maybe for this reason and for uh, the new organization also for the company, maybe, maybe people uh, used to work more in uh, at home. So yeah. I think could be uh, a great opportunity there, but uh, it's very difficult because we need to know um, how the consumer habits will change. And uh, for this, I think that this is sustainability of the, this sector, uh, it's innovation, uh, innovation. So yes, I think that um, also, in uh, in some country, the home um, uh, the home uh, consumption is more uh, it's more an habit than in the others. But um, I don't know. Maybe it could be that it's uh, it's uh, it could be an opportunity there also. Perfect. You gave me a very good uh, I would say lead to say that we might. As a specialty coffee association, need to start uh, researching consumer behavior and shifting consumer behavior during this crisis. I think this is something that uh, we've put in our plan as we're trying to adjust here. And uh, I think it's going to be very interesting, not for just the machine manufacturers, but the full, for the whole coffee industry to understand how consumer behavior is changing during this uh, crisis. Um, it has been an honor and a pleasure to to host you all today. Um, I know one hour it's not enough, so we're gonna follow up with some one-on-one -on -one, uh, interviews with uh, some of you uh, as part of the series. So it's uh, it's been an honor and a pleasure, and I would like to thank you all so much. <laughs>